So let's start off right here, okay? Let's go to Galatians chapter 1, and then uh, we'll start off at verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? So now how I do my, if you've been in my commentary studies before, this is important. That way you don't get bored, okay? This is important. Whenever I read a passage, I'll try to explain after that, okay? That's gold mine. Take advantage of that, okay? That will help you with understanding verse by verse. And then later on, you'll be able to get the gist yourself, okay? So don't just ignore it when I read a verse and explain. Don't just ignore it. That is the number one tendency that happens in commentaries. Why do I say that? Because it happened to me, all right? So I'm just giving you fair warning, okay? Yeah. I can't tell you how many times when I heard uh, Sean preach and, and Tom teach, and then they go through the verse and they explain it. I was like, going, Ooh. and then when Robert was moving around the room and saying, nah, 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 then I was paying attention, all right? So that's why I'm just giving you fair warning. So make sure you pay attention, okay? Verse 10, for do I, uh, I love all of you, for do I now persuade men or God? So Paul is asking a question right here. Uh, am I trying to persuade men over here or am I trying to persuade God? Why? Because the issue right here is that verse 9 and 8, which I commented uh, in my last video, that the, the issue is Paul saying, my gospel that I preach to you is the right gospel. Because if you know dispensationalism, ah, uh, you know, I forgot to draw right here, right? Okay, so then, if you know dispensationalism right here, so I gave a little bit of it already, right? So then, in the Old Testament, it was by the law, and then you'll notice that Paul was arguing against salvation by works, right? Yeah. And then you'll notice right here, then the church age, it's salvation by grace. Once we go under salvation by grace right here, it is absolutely not by works. Now, you understand this, though. There were different gospels, okay? There were different gospels throughout the Bible. Now, I'm not going to get into that, but there, were uh, there are mainly, so mainly, okay, Four Gospels. I can jump to ten, but there are mainly four Gospels. So one of the Gospels during this time before the church age, you got to understand, was called uh, the Gospel of the Kingdom. That was under Jesus' ministry. He said that quite often about the Gospel of the Kingdom. And then uh, in the tribulation right here, so this is a tribulation, right? In the tribulation right here, you got to understand that there's a gospel preached called the everlasting gospel. That's found at Romans, I mean not Romans, Revelation chapter 14. We're not going to turn there, but you can write that down for those of you who are not familiar, and this is new to you. So gospel of the kingdom is Matthew 4, okay? Matthew 4. And then the gospel of the tribulation is called the, go the everlasting gospel. And the everlasting gospel is Re Revelation chapter 14. Now, if you look at those two gospels, you cannot find the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ anywhere. Okay? You cannot find that when the verse mentions those two gospels. So if you're a very honest person, you'll realize these gospels are different. And that's by just reading the verse as it says. That's how you become more of a Bible believer. You just read it as it says. Amen. That's it. Read as it says, oh, you're being lazy trying to divide off something. No, we're just trying to be honest by not twisting the scripture to try to force it to say it how we want to say it. We just want to leave it as it says. We're being honest. So in Revelation chapter 14, we see the everlasting gospel. Then the church age right here, we see the, uh, Paul saying, my gospel. That's what Paul called it. So this is in context going back to Galatians chapter 2. And verse 10, that Paul was trying to say to them right here that, am I trying to persuade you or persuade God? Because this is like something new that they haven't heard of before. That's what the people are afraid of. Or do I seek to please men? Verse 10, or do I seek to please men? Paul saying, am I trying to please men? No, Paul doesn't care. For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So Paul is saying right here, if I'm focusing about other people, about losing subscribers online and members in my church, about teaching about the New Testament gospel, 
And that's different from other Gospels back then. And they'll call me a heretic and stuff like that for being a dispensationalist. No, I don't care. Because if I want to please men, I wouldn't be teaching this kind of stuff. I know how the YouTube community works. You don't think I know which doctrines I can build up my subscribers even more? And it's really funny when I actually teach genuine doctrines from the Bible, they get on me for uh, saying, oh, you're doing this to build up more subscribers. It's really funny. So basically, I can't win either way. So basically, what do I do? I don't care what you think. I don't give a flip. I'm just going to uh, teach it because God wants me to. I could care less what you think. I didn't intend to please you. I want to please God. Amen. Okay, but anyways, so we see right here, uh, I should not be the servant of Christ if I please men. So that's why Paul was trying to explain this, because this is something where the people feel scared about. This is new, and I never heard this before. So Paul's saying, no, if I knew about this, I wouldn't tell you this if I want to really please you. Verse 11, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is what? Not after man. Yeah. They preach the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. <laughs> what did Paul say right here? It's not after man. Wow. See that? This is something different. So uh, Paul's saying, I certify you. See, he's trying to make sure with them, the brethren, the gospel that I preach is not after man. This is after who? Verse 12, for I neither received it of man. The Old Testament saints say, saw glimpses of Jesus Christ who was crucified, dead, buried, and resurrected. No, no, no. Then Paul would have received it of man if he saw it from Isaiah, from the prophets back then. But he didn't. Neither was I taught it. What do you mean, neither was I taught it? See? But by the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's important, see? So this is something... This is a different gospel. There is no doubt about it. It's new that God gave to the Apostle Paul. That's important to understand, okay? New Testament, salvation by grace, not by works, is totally different. Now, you notice right here, I'm doing all this just from my head and just reading verse by verse. If you see me going exhaustive mode, I'm going to convince you of dispensational salvations, all right? Verse 13. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. Ah, so look at this right here. So in, uh, Paul's saying to them, you know about my conversation, my life, my testimony back then, about me being in the Jews' religion. I was so into Judaism. That's why it makes sense why Paul is talking about right here, verse 11 through 12, why you know, he understands why they think it differently. And they're all nervous. Because he understands the Old Testament Jews. See, everything makes sense when you're a dispensationalist. Let's keep reading right here. How that beyond measure, I persecuted the church of God. So notice right here that beyond the limitation, beyond measure, Paul actually hurt God's church and wasted it. That, you know his life story. He persecuted, hurt Christians.